To go along with the post, I wanted to demonstrate how to set up a multi-page contact form using gravity forms. It's fairly straightforward as long as you know what to look for. So let's get started. First thing we want to do is add the two contact forms. So we'll come over here, form, add new, give it a form called step, step one, create form. This form is going to be just the general information you want from your lead. And for this case, I'm just going to add the name and email address. You also may want to probably add like street, zip, and maybe even a phone number. So let's get started. Uh, add a single line text. But change the field label to name. We'll also add email. And we'll add one more will be street. I can go through and add the zip like I mentioned before and the phone, but to save some time, we'll just go with these three. Now, update the form. Now, one more step on this contact form is what we want to do is once the person hits the confirm button and sends you the lead, we want to forward them to another page that has the more complete contact form. So here we go to form settings, confirmation. In confirmation, we want to edit the default confirmation. It's fine, you can add a new one if you'd like, but I like to stick with the default. Now you see here it's set up to just print out a short text message saying that or thanking them that for filling out the contact form. What we want to do is select redirect. And the redirect early want to type out the complete address of the second contact form page, including your domain name. So http home forward slash we buy nj houses.com forward slash and we're going to call the page step dash two. Now, additionally, we can forward the information from contact form one to contact form two so it pre populates those fields so they don't have to re enter in the same information. To do this, you select pass field data via query string. The information we want to pass to the second contact form in this case are all the information that was filled in by the lead on the first contact form. So that's the name, email address, and the street. To do this, you'll type in full name. Now, in WordPress world, you can't use the the term name because it's a system field and it will cause errors. So we'll call it full name is what I usually use. Equals and then this drop down we'll select name. Now in a query string you have to add an ampersand in between each of the fields. So now we'll add the ampersand. The next field will be email equals drop down select email last one is street, so the ampersand street equals drop down street. And that's it for the query string. It's a little complicated, but it's not too bad once you get the hang of it. Now let's save the confirmation. Step one form, contact form is now completely done, and we'll create the step two, which is even easier. So we'll go over to the new form. Called step two. Here we'll add those same three fields that we had in the contact form one. Name. And in this case, 
we have to say which query string value we want this field to be populated with. So you have to go to the advanced tab, slide down all the way to the bottom, check this box, allow field to be populated dynamically. Check that and now it exposes the parameter name field, which in the query string, if you remember for name, we used full name. So that's all you have to do for the name field. Now for the email, do the same thing. Go to the advanced tab, select allow field to be populated dynamically. Type in the parameter name that we use, which is email. Close that up. Add another single line field. We call this street. We pass this value in also. And now we can add things like the city, state, and zip. I also like to uh, add some information about or ask the lead some information about why they're selling and how much they'll take, so let's just give how much would you take to sell now. Close that. Paragraph text again. Why are you selling? Finally, I like to ask how quickly do they need to sell? How quickly do you need to sell? So that should be it for these demonstration purposes. My typical contact form has quite a bit more information I'm asking for like the number of bedrooms and bathrooms but for this purpose this is fine update the form forms good if you want to preview the form click this button so that's the basic layout of the form there's no formatting we haven't said anything yet that's not in the scope of this of this video so I won't get into that Let's close this. Now the next step is to create the actual WordPress pages that will have these forms on them. Page, add new. Call this step one. Keep it simple. And now to add the contact form, it's very easy. Click this add form button. Select step one form. Insert. It inserts the short code for Gravity Form, which tells WordPress to insert that contact form into this page. Save that. You can, oh, another thing I like to do is to change the layout setting so the contact form is the only thing you see. Then we can preview the page. There's a simple contact form for step one. Uh, it looks good, so we'll publish it. Next, we'll add the second contact form page. This will be step two. Add form. Step two, insert form. There's the slug. And step two is the contact form. Now, one other thing that you have to make sure on the step two contact form is that this permalink, which is the web address that you type in in the address bar for the step two page. Make sure it matches what you typed in in the redirect portion of the step one confirmation. If it's not, say you don't want to call this step two page, you want to call it step two full form. If you type that in first, this might not match the step two page. So you can edit Make sure it says step two and hit OK. Save this form. 
preview this. Make sure everything's okay. Now, as you can see, I forgot to take off the uh, sidebar. Let's come down in here. Select no sidebar. Preview again. And there you have it. Step two contact form. Now, all the pieces are set up. Now we just have to publish and test it out. So let's publish the step two page. Go to all pages. Step forms. And let's view step one form. Let's add, fill this out. hit submit we should be redirected to the step 2 page and we should also have these this information pre-populate the same fields on the step 2 page and there you go name email and street are pre-populated and now you have additional fields for them to enter in and when they hit submit, you'll get a confirmation email as well. And this works great because it's not as intimidating for them to fill out the step one form. But once they've started filling it out, they feel more committed to the process and they'll enter in more information. What I also have set up is after they s submit the first form, I get an email as well for that form and then get a second email when they've filled out the full confirmation email, the full contact form. And it really helps me determine their motivation and saves me a ton of time. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Thank you.